Hi, everybody. My name is Jody from Reflective Waves Holistic Wellness. Welcome. So this is something I'm really passionate about, and it is the creation of an art journal. I want you to see inside of my process and to come along with me on this journey of creating art that has to do with what's going on within me, the idea of meditation, spirituality, and just an overall understanding of taking all these little elements from my life and my personal experience and then whatever's going on outside of that and placing it into a body of work. My work is surrounding a lot of different mixed media. So I'll do anything from sewing, painting, photography. I was trained classically in darkroom photography and I will add everything into a piece of artwork that I possibly can that makes sense for what I'm trying to create. And I had been going through this spell of just not feeling very creative, feeling stuck kind of in this mode of just like, I need to create, I need to create, but I don't know what to make. And I don't want to just make one-offs of you know, random stuff, and I didn't feel really inspired to create giant canvases, which I've typically done in the past, really just in this funk. And so I took to what I think everybody takes to when they're in the funk, and that is Pinterest. One of my absolute favorite mediums is sewing. And I was gifted a Husqvarna embroidery machine about five years ago. I know, it was a huge gift, absolutely wonderful gift, but I was too afraid to unpack it. I was too afraid to use it. I was like, oh, I'm gonna break it. This is too hard for me. And so I had all of these blockages. Not only was I stuck creatively, but then I had something that I absolutely love, which is sewing, and I couldn't even access that because I'm sitting here going, all right, well, how on earth am I going to create something (laughs) with this thing that I don't know how to use, which will require a learning curve and require me to be bad at it for a certain amount of time until I kind of figure it out. So when I was in this, this kind of blockage with my art process, I decided that I would look into sewing just a little bit more, see what other creatives are doing with the medium of sewing. And I found these landscape quilts. And I was like, oh, that's, that's really accessible. I could probably do something like that, but in a in a Jody way. I looked at it, I got really inspired by it. I said, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna cut the pieces of fabric. And I said, you know what? That's not gonna work for me. I don't, I don't like this process. It needs to be even more me. It needs to be even messier. It has to be even more complex. There have to be even more processes that I'm throwing on top of things. So I decided to create my own backgrounds for landscape quilts using a painting technique. I had to burn through a bunch of canvas before I finally got to where I was going to go. I'm really happy with how these are turning out. And now it's like a meditative process to create these little landscape quilts. So I want to share with you kind of the process that I do with these. And then uh, hopefully the next few journal entries will be just exploring that process and getting into this deep meditative quality, which I think you'll really appreciate. And I know I thoroughly enjoy. These are unbound. So be gentle with me here. They still need to be bound, which means they're gonna have a beautiful edge here that's, I, I hate doing it, I hate binding my quilts, I hate that process. This is going to make me a proficient master binder. If anything else will, I will be able to do binding in my sleep, so I am thankful for that opportunity. So this is what is kind of the end product. You can kind of picture it with a beautiful uh, frame or border. You can kind of think of it that way. Um, Not this loose edge that I have here, but I just wanted to show you this because I'm really proud of these. So here I have a gessoed piece of material. This is like a muslin. And I just picked this up because it was super inexpensive and I had a ton of it. So I'm using recycled and repurposed materials for this. I gessoed it, which means I primed it, and then I created my sky. So I paint this all by hand up here. 
And then down here, I select different fabrics that go along with my template that I created, because I told you it has to be a huge process in order for me to do something. And then I applied that different pieces of fabric. And then if you look here, you'll see, this is a really good example here, I have embroidered with my embroidery machine that I had to learn how to use. So I'm super proud of all the skills I'm building. And I had to learn how to do that. And it was a little tricky and I'm still learning. And embroidery is tough. Hand embroidery and machine embroidery, that is a hard skill to crack. So you'll notice that you see this embroidery and that kind of solidifies up these loose edges and just makes this an overall really beautiful piece. This one's probably the better example. It is the Delaware River. So I live in the Catskills, which means the Delaware River like runs right past pretty much down the street from me. And it is the lifeblood of the community. And it's definitely a really important facet of living in upstate New York. So it was important that I included that in here. Um, plus I'm reflective wave. So anything water related, I'm just all over. I just adore it. It's something that's always called to me from a very young age. So here is the Delaware River, and then you have the Catskills and the mountains as you look down towards New Jersey. So this was a really meaningful experiment. And these are just a couple that I finished. You can see it's the same template, but different fabric. So it creates that uniqueness. And I wanna show you today kind of the process of this because I think it's really unique. So here I have three, one, two, three bookmarks. And I call them bookmarks because you could use them as bookmarks. You probably wouldn't hang these up on your wall, but that's okay. And you'll notice that they have white on them and that I have sketched out my template for a two and a half by seven, two and a half by five. I can't remember right off the bat. I sketched out my template and then I gessoed or primed this. This is a cotton blend of some sort. I want to say it's a cotton and it's very, very slick. So it's a lot different than the muslin of the previous example. And I just had a ton of this. My grandmother actually um, gave me a whole big bolt of just this fabric. So I was like, ooh, this will be great for painting on. Obviously that's what one thinks, right? So uh, you'll see that it's kind of like folded in. Um, storage, it can be tight sometimes. So this is kind of tucked in a weird way. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how you would get that kind of out without using a ironing um, board and iron because I don't really wanna apply heat at this moment. It's not gonna matter, but all I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of fresh water on the back and I'm just going to rub it on the edges. And this is a no heat process. Now, if you went to go throw this in a heap somewhere, I would be mindful that you don't want any mold to kind of start happening between a whole bunch of them. But you'll see that it doesn't really affect anything. And now I get to start with a nice flat space. All right, so I use acrylic paint for this kind of that warm glow of the sun and then it kind of goes up into that night sky. So why don't we do that for these today? And it's so funny when I put things away in random places because my brain is just on a track somewhere. So the colors we're gonna use are black, which makes sense for the sky where it's really nighttime and dark. And then I'm gonna use just the primary colors for this. So blue, red, and yellow. And I don't need a whole lot because I'm working on such a small space. So I like to start from light to dark. So I'm just gonna mix up a pale yellow. And just start with that pale yellow on the bottom of where my sun would be setting or rising. And then our next color is going to be purple. 
which I'm just gonna mix with a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. And some white. Just blend that in. I think I need a little bit of blue. Okay, so these are going to have to dry. I could use the heat gun. I don't in I don't really like using the heat gun on this because I have so many layers of paint and it can just bubble up if it gets too hot. I'm gonna let this dry. We're gonna come back and do the clouds. That was impeccable timing on our stopping because I got a call from the Delaware Valley Opera Center and we are working together, collaborate on an art show. So I will be the curator over at the Delaware Valley Opera Center and that will be really fun. I've already started to get some submissions for the artwork that will be there and it will just be a nice way to honor the local community and to connect even further in the arts. So I was really happy to get that phone call in the middle of creation, which is always fun when things like kind of line up that way. So here, these are pretty dry. I did go ahead and just give them a quick little uh, shoot with the heat gun. So if you look here, I wanna talk a little bit about the sky, right? So it went from yellow to purple to blue to black, and now I need to add in some clouds. You'll notice that these clouds are mostly in the grays and blacks with a little bit of white for the edges where the moon is probably giving a bit of a shine to. The moon is a crescent moon here. I can change that. I don't have to stay to that. And I usually don't. I like to change my designs around just to make them a little bit interesting and more unique because I never know what's going to inspire somebody or draw somebody in. And I want to always be honoring that. 
And then you'll see I added some little dots for some stars. So this will be the theme of these three. So the first thing I like to start with is just picking up kind of a, a nice brush here for my clouds. And then I like to really tap into the skies that I remember seeing throughout my lifetime. I don't use a reference image for this. Uh, I've definitely spent some time really looking at the clouds and going, okay, that's how that layers and that's how that moves. And I really love this meditative quality of just creating these clouds that maybe I would have seen as a kid. My life growing up was not ideal. It was a very challenging youth. Um, and so one of the things that really helped me was to look up at the sky and kind of envision that I could go anywhere and end up somewhere magical. So this to me is a very personal statement of just connecting with the fact that the sky is so boundless and it really does allow us to be almost anywhere because we're all underneath the same sky. When I moved to my new school in middle school, I was having a really difficult time being away from my grandparents and I remember my English teacher she gave me a poem and the poem was underneath we're all underneath the same sky and it was uh, just really it's always impacted me from from then on out I really take that seriously every time I look up at the sky and the clouds and no matter what time of day it is I know that I'm connected to that I'm connected to my grandmother who's still with us and that I am in all the beautiful places that I've ever visited or the places that I find comfort on a regular basis. So connecting to the sky has always been a really big part of my life ever since I was a kid. So these are just a little nod to that. And you can see I'm just really open with my brush stroke here, um, just having some fun with it. I don't like hammer myself that it needs to look a certain way. I keep it really flowing and I like that because the clouds, you know, they're just created by the universe and, and whatever is going on there. So they're not adhering to any particular pattern. So it's kind of nice to kind of tap into that as an artist and say, oh, I can kind of release a little bit of pressure here for perfection which can be tough, <laughs> right? Anytime we're, we're kind of attempting that perfection can be hard. So these clouds are wet. So I need to let them kind of dampen down. This is an extended drying time for my black, for the acrylic is an open. So it's gonna take a long time for these to dry, which is good because I want to come in to do the white around the clouds and it's gonna be nice to have the little bit of dampness in the paint to allow that to happen. But in the meantime, I'm gonna come in and do my moon and you're gonna see that I, I will switch from whatever I think the composition should have in it. Like this one, I'll do a crescent. This one I think needs a full moon. Mm, this one I think needs a crescent. One of the favorite things I like to do for these nighttime skyscapes is the shooting stars so I'm going to show you how I do that. We're going to put the stars in and I just use a brush and just tap very gently. We're working super small here on the bigger artworks. I can get a little bit more expressive but you know what you can only get so tiny. You can always go bigger. All right, so here's some stars.
we go. Now to put in a shooting star, I like to find a star or make one that should go along with the composition. So for example, right in here, maybe I would take this star and I would just give it a little tail. And maybe I wanna do another one. I'll take this star and give it a little tail. And both of my tails are gonna go in the same direction. They don't have to. I just find that that works better. And for me, I have to actually turn my canvas for this. So if I want one here, I'll start with that star and just give it a little tail. And maybe one down here. The same direction really helps with the illusion that something's falling from the sky. Not everything's going to get one. I'm not going to do a shooting star on this one. Some people like them, some people don't. I always think that they're super cool when I get to see them. So it's something that I like to bring in personally. All right, let's go ahead and add just a little bit of white to the edges of our clouds. And this is uh, a very gentle practice. I'm just tracing around with my open acrylic white and I'm only gonna do the top of my clouds. It's a little tricky because these are much smaller than the example and you can see that I have to be really mindful because these are gonna be in the direction of the moon. And then I'm just gonna give it a pat to kind of blend it in and mix it in with the black that's underneath. And you can see how it goes pretty gray, pretty quick which is fine for this, it's not a problem. So like that, that one got a little too white. I'm just gonna take a bit of black. Make it a bit more gray. Cool. I think playing with light is really important when you're creating in paint or anything really. Just keep focusing on that light source and make it all about playing with the light. And just being expressive in that expression of what light would look like. That one's a little hard to see on the screen but that came out good actually, really nice. And you know, that's the other thing about these. These are really fun because if I don't like it, I don't have to use it, right? So if there's a, a piece on here that doesn't make any sense for me, I'm not gonna use it. So this is the fourth step in a very long process type of artwork. And I wanted to share this with you today because it's something that I have absolutely loved doing and these little bookmarks will be finished up with the actual embroidery and fabric that the sample piece has. So this part of the artwork will be filled with fabric and embroidery, and then they will each get their own binding. Like I said before, I hate binding. So this is gonna be the best thing that I can do because I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna be really, really good at it at the end. I'm going to keep pushing myself to learn new things that will serve me in the future. So this is what this looks like. And you can see, because I have a bunch of them here, that they come in different sizes. Here's a bigger one, and then I have an even bigger one. 
I have a whole bunch of different ones from the nighttime, daytime, seasonal, whether it be fall, winter, spring, summer. I do have clouds, no cloud, shooting stars, no shooting stars. I have a whole ton. And really this is because this project is so personal to me, like looking up as a child at the sky and feeling like I could go anywhere. This, this freedom, this abundance that really just resonated with just standing in nature underneath the presence of the moon or the stars or the sunshine and just knowing that nature would always be there for me. And it was one of the most pivotal and important parts of my life growing up because it gave me a bit of abundance and resilience to continue going and growing in the way that I needed to as a human being in that stage of my life. Even if I wasn't aware of it as a child, I, it definitely helped give me the strength to continue going. Of course, as we start moving into different pieces of this project, you'll see the overview like this. I'll show you how I do what I do, because I'm crazy. <laughs> how I do my multi-step ridiculous process on everything I do. I will show you the next step after we are totally done these dry. I will show you the next step for that. And then we will um, kind of go through each step together and have this beautiful, I think, body of work that will be available on my store and then also at the craft fair. So I look forward to doing that. All right, thank you for joining me. Please like this video if you enjoyed this process, my crazy process, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And of course, all of the wonderful tools and techniques that I have available, including the yoga and the meditation, and of course, all the stuff, just all of it. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you on the next one.